hydrosphere means the total amount of water present on the earth and earth surface is covered by 71% water let's study about water cycle so water moves in a continuous cycle changes from water vapor to ice and again back to water so this continuous changing forms of water is known as what i call hydrological cycle so water from the surface of the earth evaporates on heating goes up into the sky converts into water vapor this water vapor again gets carried up in the air and it cools down when it cools down it condenses changes back into the liquid state and forms clouds and when these clouds become heavy they come down to the surface of the earth as precipitation or rainfall so this is the image of water cycle where there is transpiration evaporation condensation then precipitation again precipitation comes back as rain how is this 71% water distributed it is divided into two types fresh water and salt water 97% of the water is found in the oceans and is salty the remaining 3% is fresh water so 97% salt and 3% fresh water so fresh water so fresh water has very little salt unlike the salty water 60% of the fresh water is in the frozen form in the form of glaciers and ice sheets 30% of the fresh water is in the form of underground water 1% of the fresh water is on the liquid form on the surface of the earth such as in streams and lakes so the point at which water is found beneath the earth surface at any given place that point is known as water table so aquifers are nothing but water bearing layers of rocks under the ground so this is the water table ocean water oceans form the major part of the hydrosphere all the oceans are let's study about the movement of water in the oceans so ocean water is always moving and this moving is due to three factors force of the wind temperature difference between different parts of the sea and gravitational force so this movements in the oceans will be noticed as waves tides and currents let's study in detail about these three so first one is waves so rhythmic up and down movement of the water on the surface of the ocean causes waves and there are different sizes in the waves they range from small small ripples to massive tsunamis the common factor for the formation of waves is wind so as a wave moves it forms a succession of crest and trough so horizontal distance between two crest is known as the wavelength and the height of the wave is determined by three factors these three factors are length of the time for which the wind has blown over the water distance of the open water over which the wind has blown known as fetch and also wind speed and the breaking wave is known as swash and the receding wave is known as backwash this is the image of wave next is tides periodic rising and falling of the sea level due to gravitational pull of the moon and sun acting on the rotating earth causes tides tides are two types high tides and low tides so during the high tides waters rise in the tide belt and rush towards the land and flood the land but during the low tides water level falls and sea level, sea water recedes so areas which are alternately submerged and exposed by rising and falling tides are known as tidal flats so if sun moon and earth they are lined up in a straight line the sun's pull gets added to that of the moon so tides have a higher tidal range so high tides are high and low tides are low and spring tides are also there which occur on full moon days and new moon days this is the image showing different types of tides what are the uses of tides tides help in navigation process ships which come into the harbor during the high tide region as water in the harbor becomes deeper during this time and low tides are beneficial for fishing fishermen go into the open sea for fishing tidal power is used to generate electricity tidal action helps in mixing up the nutrients and makes the coastal region rich in the marine life during the high tides water comes onto the land and lot of fishes also come along with it 
so tides keep the mouths of the rivers free of sediments by carrying the sediments far from the sea this is how low tides and high tides are shown currents these are streams of water flowing con continuously through the ocean in a definite particular direction these currents are caused by variations in the temperature of ocean water because of rotation of the earth because of the prevailing winds because of the difference in density and salinity of the water in different parts of the oceans and also the shape of the land currents are of two types warm currents and cold currents so from the equatorial region to the polar region the currents moving are warm currents example the gulf stream cold currents move from polar bear to the tropical region this is the image showing the water currents effect of ocean currents they influence the temperature region which they travel warm currents increases the temperature of the coast and winds that blow over the cold currents they become cold winds and dry winds so along the western coasts they are dry and cold winds lead to the development of deserts like atacama and namib deserts in the convergence of hot and cold desert hot and cold currents it leads to the formation of fog because of fog the ships cannot see the way through which they are traveling but this convergence makes excellent fishing ground because of the presence of planktons so this is the ocean currents this is the gulf next is water pollution contamination of both underground and surface water leads to water pollution and makes it unfit for drinking and this polluted water contains bacteria parasites animal waste toxic waste etc this is the image of polluted water